This is the Sigma Plant Finder product knowledge series. Today we are covering cranes. This first picture is of a small mobile crane. It's a two axle crane. It's got hydrostatic drive, which means it has the large wheels. It has a front cab, a double front cab, which gives room for the driver and operator in transport. It's got a top cab where the operator sits during operation for use. Behind the top cab, it's got a uh, cream steel counterweight. Those counterweights can be added or removed to increase the capacity of the crane. The long grey piece we refer to as a boom or jib. This is telescopic and on this size of crane, a 40 ton crane is probably going up to about 40 meters. Hanging off the front of the jib is the hook block. This is a 10 ton hook block. Even though this is a 35 ton crane, it will rarely lift more than 10 tons because the 35 ton refers to the maximum lifting capacity, which obviously means that it's right next to the crane. As you go further out from the crane, the lifting capacity reduces. In front of the front axle and behind the rear axle, it's got outriggers, or hydraulic jacks, which slide out and lift the crane off the floor to give it stability. Now this crane is probably got one engine which will both drive the jib and the winches and also the wheels. It having hydrostatic drive means that the engine will drive a hydraulic pump which will then supply hydraulic fluid to each of the wheels. Each of the wheels will then have a hydraulic motor which gives the drive to each wheel. PPM use the American tonnage system so an ATT400 crane like this has a maximum capacity of 35 tons. This next crane again is a PPM. It is an ATT600 which is a 50 ton. Again it'll be a left hand drive crane. Most cranes are left hand drive because they're either built in America or in Europe. This crane just above the counterweights you can see the two winches. Twin winches are required in some applications, for instance where you're flipping the object, you're lifting, such as in a precast concrete yard where you need to lift and flip the molds. Some other crane hive applications also require twin winches. This is a three axle crane. Again it's hydrostatic drive. It's got the top and bottom cabs. On this next picture we can see another larger mobile crane. This is a Lieber crane. It's an LTM 1080. LTM means that it's Lieber truck mount, which is their term for mobile cranes. The 1080 means that it is an 80 tonner. This um, is standard for all of Lieber's cranes. For instance, an LTM 1120 is a 120 ton crane and a Lieber 1055 is a 55 ton crane. In the frame at the rear underneath the counterweights you can see those large round pads they are crane pads and they go underneath the outriggers when you're lifting the crane up to stop the crane sinking which would result in the crane falling over. To the right of the boom that blue lattice piece is a fly jib or a lattice jib that swings out round and fixes on the end of the jib which gives another 8 or 16 meters reach onto the end of the boom for very light loads. This crane is the same principle as the mobile cranes it does not have a front cab we call it a city crane it's two axle it's got the hydrostatic drive it's similar in all aspects to a normal mobile crane apart from the fact it is driven and operated from the top cab and this gives much more maneuverability for inner city work it's much shorter this is another city crane it's a 70 ton DMAG DMAG was amalgamated with PPM and they're now manufactured under the Terex brand DMAG model numbers run AC70 which is 70 ton AC 100 which is 100 ton they're quite simple to figure out. Grove is another manufacturer of crane their 
model numbers run they will start with GMK and 5100 means it's a 100 tonner and 6100 is another 100 tonner but it's the newer generation and a 3055 is a 55 tonner this is a Grove truck mount crane it's not got the hydrostatic drive, it's got a standard truck chassis with an engine prop shaft driving the two rear axles it's much simpler to maintain and areas such as Africa often prefer it this has got a single front cab, not a double um, it's got a top cab, it's probably only got a single engine on cranes which have a double engine a top and a bottom engine you'll get a kilometers reading for the bottom engine which drives the wheels and an hours reading for the top engine which drives the crane the jib this is a rough terrain crane it's a Grove RT860 it's a very American um, crane you don't often see these in Europe this is a 60 tonner which again is American tons it'll be a 50 ton in Europe it's got it's it's a two axle crane you can see the outriggers the boom this is a twin winch crane which is very useful again in applications such as dockyards and precast yards this next picture is another rough terrain crane it's a single winch crane which can be a disadvantage in some applications again you can just see the lattice boom and it's got a you can see the hook block hanging from the end of the jib this is a crawler crane crawler cranes tend to run from 30 tons up to about six eight hundred tons they are designed or able to cope with much higher loads than truck mount cranes because the steel telescopic boom is not as strong as the lattice boom that is utilized on crawler cranes however when you're uh, when you're building up a crawler crane you need another crane there to lift the lattice booms in place so crawler cranes are good for site works where there's longer duration of work whereas mobile cranes with the telescopic booms they're all self-contained you can drive them around set them up in a day and go home at the end Again, on this crawler crane, you can see the stack of counterweights behind the body. The winches are mounted inside the back of the body, almost between the counterweight. The pads on the undercarriage are very large and flat, designed to spread the load over as much as possible. This is another crawler crane. It's a Hitachi machine. You can see the lattice boom. This is a tower crane, it's a flat top tower crane. The, we measure tower cranes by the height under the hook, which is the maximum height under the hook when the hook is fully lifted, and the length of the jib. This may be something like a 60, ton, a 60 meter jib, and they're used mainly for city building works. This is a luffing jib tower crane where the front of the tower crane lifts which means that it gives you additional height and more versatile reach these are self erect tower cranes these are shown them folded for transport you can just pull them on the road in this position and they erect themselves to be a tower crane in this fashion you can see on the base the concrete blocks laid out on the base to give the crane ballast and in the background there's another tower crane with much larger concrete blocks that is obviously for a crane with much larger weight thanks for listening <laughs>